to check out the temp right now. It's negative six degrees on the dash. Um, I guess it feels like negative 40 out right now. I went to fill up gas and uh, my hands were like instantly frozen. It's probably by far the coldest day I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> Look at all the blowing snow on the road too. It's, it's not good. And we're picking up a Honda 400EX. Um, the guy said I could have her for 1500 bucks. I think it was like up for 22. So we'll see when we get there. I guess there's a bunch of aftermarket parts on it. Um, and a couple problems with it. So we'll see when we get there. We're gonna try to film and uh, get the whole experience for you guys. Oh, yeah, a little bit. It's over here. So what's the story with it? So uh, I bought it, what was it? A year ago or more. Yeah. Was it last summer or summer before? I don't know. I think it was, I think it was last summer. We Beginning? made it last summer maybe, something okay. like that. And I uh, rode it since then. I put on new tires and then I uh, did the bumpers. That's okay. I haven't really done a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. So I did. Always ran good? Yeah, it ran pretty yeah. good. Besides, I lost the battery. That's what sucked. I had to bump start it for a little bit. Okay. So. trick to get that off. Seems like the levers. Can I just get it pushed down? Oh, there you go. You said that a carburetor needed to be adjusted or something? Yeah, so I was, I mess, or I was, this came off. Okay. And I was taking the seat off, and then this came off, and I was trying to put it back on, and I bumped this. And I don't know really what it is, and then it started backfiring after that. Okay. And then now I got I borrowed this battery from a friend, and last night we went out and we tried starting it, and it we pushed this down a little bit, you know, just slowly as we were cranking it. Mm -hmm. It honestly popped over pretty quick. That's just a choke, right? Right there. I think so. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, you want to fire it up for me?
Does it uh, shift through all the gears pretty good? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll take her. Alright. Sounds good. Uh, you might have to take that battery off. Alright, we got the quad in the back there. You guys kind of saw it, heard the story on it. I guess he traded it for a YFZ 450. Um, which is a crazy good deal for the other guy. I guess the YFC 450 had problems, so we got this one, and he said it ran good. Then he said the choke mechanism started coming up, and it was uh, backfiring. That's why the carburetor needed adjusting. Um, he took out the battery before he sold it, because he borrowed it from his friend. So there's no battery in it. We'll have to order one up. But other than that, the thing is it's in pretty decent shape. We'll have to go over the whole thing when I get home. But it's, it's not too bad. 1500 bucks. Usually these go for like 25, so not a bad deal. All right, just made it home. It's so windy and cold out. Whew. Here it is. It's not a bad looking quad. 1500. White Brothers exhaust on it. Nice. Missing the tail light, missing the battery. Tires are decent, back ones are bald. Yeah, not too bad. We'll take a closer look when we get it inside in the heat. It's too cold out here to do this. All right, got her off the trailer here. It is big board to a 440. I don't know if there's a aftermarket cab in there. Pro taper bars in it, nice. Yeah, not too bad. All right, we got this thing in the garage. Vinny's over here and he's out once the camera comes on. <laughs> I don't know why Vinny's so shy now. He's camera shy. He crawled back into his cage. He's like, I don't want to be on camera. Yeah, so this is a 2002, supposedly, Honda 400DX. Uh, first look at it, it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? But with further inspection, there's kind of a lot of small things wrong with it that I didn't even notice when I was there. It was so cold out today that I just wanted to get the deal done and over with so I could go back into my car. So I didn't really have a chance to look it over too much, but after now looking it over for a good 10 minutes in the garage, I found a lot wrong with it. So let's first go over the aftermarket parts on it and then we'll start going over all the problems. So it's got the, uh, how do you pronounce that? Olins, Olins maybe? O-H-L-I-N-S, made in Sweden, shocks on it. Not sure if those are any good. Let me know in the comments. I've never heard of them before, so. They match, they're yellow. <laughs> um, we've got the Pro Taper bars that are raised up a little bit. Um, let's see what else. We've got the Nerf bars on it. The netting over here is ripped off. Two, two places right there. What kind of tires do we have? Brand new tires in the front, he said. He put those on. The front ones are Mass FX tires. The back ones are Sun F tires, and those are pretty much bald in the back. We've got the White Brothers E-Series um, silencer. I think that's a full exhaust system, actually. Yeah, it looks like a full exhaust system. Look how big that thing is, right here. <laughs> it's huge. And then right here it's missing the clamp. Seat looks aftermarket, it's like a gripper seat. Probably just a cheaper one. It's got graphics that are aftermarket on it. Those actually don't look too bad. Has a non-expiring private ATV UTV sticker for Wisconsin. That's kind of nice. Supposedly this thing is a 440. We'll have to check it. Um, it says 440EX on it. It's like a custom made bumper for it. I'm guessing they bought this part and then welded the little 
front bumper piece in there. Um, and then the nice grab bar in the back. Looks like they painted it yellow. Used to be aluminum it looks like. Yeah. It looks like it has all balls bearings. And the back here. I think that's pretty much it for aftermarket parts. So not a ton. Let's quick look at the year. So 2002 should have a two of a tenth digit, if I can even see it on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's hard to see. Oh yeah, there's a two. One, two, three, Yeah, it looks like a two. So it is in fact a 2002, so that's good. All right, let's go over all the problems. So, the swing arm bushings are like gone. Look at this. All right, I guess I could lift up this wheel. Let's see how can I show it best. Bushings are gone in there, look how much play that is. <laughs> That's horrible. That's really bad. Check out the play in there. Let me zoom in. I've never seen one with that bad of play. Pretty much just gone. It's really, really bad. The bars I noticed were bent. I didn't see that when I was there. I thought they were just turned, but they are bent. I've got the steering wheel completely straight and you can see it's like bent that way. So like the actual steering stem must be bent. Or like the piece up here, the bracket up there. But you can see if you look in here, you can see the steering stem sitting more over to this side than, than the other side. See how much, much of a gap there is over here. So yeah, steering stem's bent. That's wonderful. Um, like I said before, it is missing the battery. Not really a problem. And then the clamp right here is missing. So there's a big exhaust leak. A, the mount, one of the mounts is broken down here on the frame, you can see. There should be a bolt holding the engine on down there. Let's see if I can see through there. Yeah, right there. Down there. There should be a bolt going through the engine down there to the other side of the frame. But the mount like that on the other side is broken off. So that's just awesome. Um, anything else bent on this thing? A-arms actually look good. So I'm wondering how they bent the, uh, the steering stem. <laughs> Must have flipped it over or something. But yeah, this thing looks pretty beat on. Then the, uh, the fenders are held on barely by like that piece of metal. And then the other one's like not even on. But the plastics don't look too bad. No cracking anywhere on the plastics. Usually you see cracking over here, over there. And on the front, usually people cut these off. Oh, there's a crack right there. I didn't see that before. So one small crack, but honestly, the plastics look pretty good. No rips in the seat except that little tiny guy right there. So seat looks pretty decent. Yeah, so that's all the problems. And Oh, and then the, the main one is there's a bunch of oil leaking from somewhere. I think it's a valve cover, but you can see all of the oil down there. It was just pooling down there. Must have been losing a lot of oil. I'm hoping there's not like a crack somewhere. I kind of looked that over when I bought it, but um, like I said, it was so cold. My fingers were freezing. And um, there's a bunch of gunk and dirt all over the engine. So I couldn't really see what were cracks and what were not. Oh, and then the pipe bolts aren't in there to hold this one on, to mount that pipe on. And one of them is stripped out. And then one of them is 
you can see cut off short so that one's cut off pretty short so it won't fit onto the, the nut in there and the other one's completely missing and I think it's stripped out so lots of small stuff that's wrong with it um, I think what we're gonna do first is quick start this guy up with a jumper see if she starts See what it sounds like and see where that oil's leaking from. <laughs> I thought it was nicer than what it was when I first bought it. Didn't expect it to be this bad. All right, let's see here. Vinny's here, <laughs> checking out the quad, the first start. Looks like the neutral light doesn't work. Starts right up. See if it smokes here. It's hard to tell in the cold when I was buying it. smokes a little bit but that might just be from the oil coming from the valve cover into the pipe there I don't know we'll probably tear into the top end just see what's going on what's funny is that I don't know if this is a big bore kit on here unless they bored it over because it has the stock uh, cylinder on it Still says 397. So if it was a 440 kit, it would say like what 439 or something. So I don't know if it is big board. <laughs> I think maybe the guy just told him that. Um, I guess we can check the oil, see what that looks like. Oil check is right here on it. See if there's any oil in there. I didn't even check the oil when I was there. Oh yeah, there's oil in it. It's at the upper level. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little darker. It doesn't look horrible. I've seen worse. So at least there's oil in it, that's, that's a good sign. Because a lot was leaking out of here. It looks like it's from the valve cover, you can see oil pooling around that gasket right there. See, this is oil right there. So I think it is coming from the valve cover. Or one of those bolts is stripped out or something. Well, it looks pretty much complete, so that's good. Missing the bolt right there for the box. Everything's clamped down, that's good. Let's see if there's an air filter in there. Ooh, air filter, seen better days. It's pretty hardened up. Filter's not too good. Oh, barely on there. 
It's like really janky on there. Looks like a nice pipe though. Hmm. Yeah, she's a little rough. I think what we're gonna do is, since we've gotta fix the, the bolt on the, um, the exhaust, I think we're gonna take it down to the head, check out the cam in there, and just see what's going on. Um, make sure the cam chain's good, make sure the valves are good, and um, I think we're gonna seal up the valve cover so it doesn't have that leak anymore. So all the plastics need to come off on the front of it. Actually impressed it has the clips. Usually these are missing. Wow, tank straps are still on it. Look at that. Usually a good sign. That means whoever rebuilt it didn't lose everything and put everything back together correctly. Plastics can just be off to the front like that. You can see how crappy the steering stem is. That's super bent. Look at that. Look how bent that is. Stripped out like that. There you go. Yeah, the bolt might just be stripped out. It looks pretty. Looks like the threads are all messed up. All right, gas tank should come off. Shield, everything is there. Wow. All the bolts are in here. So I don't know if this thing was taken apart. I believe these are the original clips too. Alright. Let's see, can we see where the leak is? It looks like it's out of this cover part right here. Oof. Look how much oil was on that. Jeez. Look at it in there. Ugh, it's all gunked up. Obviously missing the bolt right there. That one's probably stripped out. And I'm guessing this one's probably just loose in here. Probably stripped out as well. There's a missing bolt right there. So two missing bolts. It's not horrible. Like I said, I've, I've seen way worse. That's probably why oil's leaking. That one's on there. This pipe is not even on at all. All right, we gotta get this mount off and then we can take the valve cover off, but I wanna first check the valves, make sure those are within spec. All right, let's pop these valve covers off here. Oh, that was, okay. That was um, extremely loose on there. That wasn't even tightened down. Surprised no oil came out of there. Let's see if this one's tight. <laughs> that one's that one's loose as well. Okay. Interesting. Let's see if these are tight. Not putting any pressure on it. Nope. <laughs> are you serious? Look, that one. What the heck? Maybe that's where the oil was coming from. Because those were not tight at all. Those weren't tightened down at all. 
That's crazy. All right, we gotta get this thing to top dead center. All right, so when I was there, I asked the guy if it shifted through all the gears smoothly. Let's just see if it shifts through all the gears before we go any further. I completely forgot to check that. So I guess if, if it doesn't shift, it's my fault. This first, neutral. Uh-oh. There's second, third. Fourth. Feels like it's shifting. Neutral. There's first. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. There's fifth. Okay, all the gears are there. All right, well, at least it shifts through all the gears smoothly enough. All right, let's get these caps off of here. There we go. All right, doing good so far. Not stripping anything yet. <laughs> Usually this one gives me trouble down here. All right, I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise. I'm just looking through the hole at the top here. Or a T. There it is. Right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. T with a line next to it. Up here. And we'll check and see if the valves are loose. And you can see they're tight, so we're 180 out still. I think I passed it. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yeah, there's the T right there. So now, we're at the T again. That valve is tight. That valve is tight. That one's super loose. <laughs> and that one's tight. So all the valves are tight, except for this one being super loose. So I'm hoping we don't have a bent valve. If we did, it probably wouldn't start because it would have like zero compression. But maybe something's going on with that one. Unless it's just worn out and wasn't adjusted. But all the other ones are tight, which is really weird. All right, we're getting the spark plug out. We're gonna check compression before we set the valves. I just wanna see what it was at. Cause it's gotta be low if all the valves are tight like that. It's crazy. But yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking this is a big bore kit. I'm really not. Here's the plug. If it's a cheap plug, it, you know, that comes with the kit, it might be a big bore kit. Let's see. Oh my gosh, look at all that gunk. No, it's an NGK. DPR8Z. But yeah, she's pretty black. Okay, we're gonna try to fish this down in there.
Just going in. Throttle open. Came off. <laughs> So we're at about 120. All right, valve adjustment for the intake is 0 0.004 inches and for the exhaust 0 0.005. Free first. Let me get our feeler gauge out. Let's see, where are you? Just gonna twist this guy out. Twist it back in. Just until you can move it kind of like that. Too tight. Right there is perfect. So we'll tighten that guy down. I like to keep my screwdriver in there and then use a wrench like that. And we should be good. Yep. That one's good. And just one more quick tighten. Perfect. All right, and this one, as you can see, it's tight, it won't fit in there. Loosen that guy up. Tighten it back down. Just until you feel resistance. Right there. Tighten that guy back up. Perfect. One more tighten. And now, you can hear the gap in there. So those are good. Exhaust valve was like really, really badly gapped. You can see that. Way too big of a gap and this one's tight. So these are gonna be 0 .005 inches. Um, we're gonna do the same process for these as we did to these, so we'll quick adjust those and then test compression again, see if it went up. All right, so valves are all adjusted perfectly to spec. Let's try this compression test again, see if we get a little bit higher reading. And here we go, throttle open. Nope, same reading. So it must not have been affecting the, the compression. So that's good. All right, so valves all stayed perfectly within spec after rotating the engine, so they're all perfect. I was a little bit worried about that one, but that one stayed perfect. So we're gonna get this valve cover off and uh, see what kind of cam is in there. With the Honda 400EX, I like to break these eight millimeter bolts free first. They can really easily break off if you use a impact. They all feel pretty tight. That one's really loose. That one's not holding anything down. So that one's probably, yeah, I think down here stripped out because the threads look good. That one's stripped out. <laughs> Completely. And 
in the middle. 12 mil. That one's not stripped. Ah, oh, that one's not. You know, you never know, there might be hot cams in here. That'd be kind of cool. It came off pretty easily. Lots of oil up there. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of oil. Better than no oil. All right, rockers. They're all moving. Cool, rockers look good. Here. Yeah, it looks like the stock cam. Cam chain's tight enough. Could be a little bit tighter, but not too bad. Here's the gasket that failed, you can see right here. I think it was leaking out of there. See where the paint's worn off? It's usually where that fails. Look how much oil was in there. It's a good sign. Yeah, it looks like a stock cam. Yeah, so stock cam. Typically that means that they probably did not big bore it. Usually put, people put like a stage two or three hot cams in there if they're gonna big bore it. So I'm guessing it's not big board, but do you think we should go all the way down and just see if it is? I'm kind of curious. I think we might just do that. Also, I'm seeing like straight oil coming out of the pipe. So that's probably not a great sign either. All right, just tearing off the carburetor here. It looks like we do in fact have the original Keyhan carb. You can see the Keyhan on the side there as well. So that's good at least. I don't like those aftermarket ones. They're cheap. Let this hang off to the side. Over on this side, I think. Doesn't look like any oil down there at all. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. That's stripped out. Awesome. Right in there, you can see somebody tried to get it out before they cut a little line through it. So what we might have to do is just take out the middle bolt right here, and back that tensioner off. Oh, there we go, okay. That's good. That came off. All right. So these little pins were in there on either side of the cam. So that's the first thing you have to do is take those out. Now. Or actually get the bearings off first. <sighs> that bearing feels pretty smooth. Next bearing. Pretty smooth. Bearings are good. Tie this off to the frame. Get the cam out. Here we go. So, good time to check the cam. All the lobes look good. No uh, flat spots on the cam lobes. So all of those look really good actually. Those should be torqued down a lot more than that. 
should not come off that easily. That one was torqued down. The other ones weren't. That one was. Oh man. Oh. That one is uh, really on there. See what's going on down here. Cylinder wall looks really nice. Nice and clean. Doesn't look like a high compression piston or anything. Alright, head looks pretty good actually. Doesn't look too bad. Some of these holes are stripped out, you can see in there. You've got the decompression pin with the spring. I'm looking at the valves, all the valves look pretty decent actually. Nothing's bent or anything. KOY it says on the valves. Is it KCY? Everything looks pretty decent. Not seeing any cracks or anything like that. So I think head checks out. That's pretty decent. All right. Moment of truth. Let's get the cylinder off, and we'll see if we do, in fact, have a big bore in here. So those four bolts weren't torqued down very hard, and then obviously this one was loose. A stud. Doesn't look like the cylinder was poured out or anything. That one was a little bit. This one was really loose. So good thing we're going over this thing. I mean, whoever rebuilt it did not do a great job. Now we can get the tap. All right, here we go. See what this looks like. Are the rings stuck? Ooh, that is smelling really bad. It smells like burnt oil. Rings aren't stuck or anything. Looks pretty good. Maybe they're just really worn out. <laughs> Let's rotate that over. See what that crank looks like in there. All right, well, the rod bearing looks like it's fine. No up and down play. Just a little side to side, which is perfect. All right, you're not gonna believe this, but this thing is actually a 440. <laughs> Piston size is right at 88.72 millimeters. And 89 is uh, <laughs> the 440, so it is a 440. Stock is 85, so it's way, way overboard. And this is the stock cylinder. That's crazy. And then the ring gap right there isn't even that big. It's worn, but not not horrible. I've definitely seen worse, so I don't know. Maybe the valve seals were leaking. All right, quick checking out the cylinder. 
Cylinder looks really good. It looks like it was just recently honed out. Doesn't look too bad. No cracks in the cylinder at all. Cylinder checks out. No cracks in the piston. Piston doesn't look too bad. So everything looks pretty decent. Let's check the oil and see if that bottom end is good. All right, so there's an oil drain plug right here. And then there's one on the bottom of the canister right there. So we gotta drain both of those. And this will kind of tell us if there's any metal in the oil. Not much in there. Looks like it's pretty black coming out of there. All right, that was the oil in the engine. No metal chunks or anything in there. So that's good. Let's drain this stuff out of the oil canister here. It's gonna be a 14 mil for this one. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, quite a bit in there. You can see that turning out pretty good. Yeah, most of the oil was in the oil canister. All right, let's check out this filter now. See how bad this looks. Filter actually looks pretty good. Look at that, no chunks on it. Nothing. Really, really clean in there. Not a single chunk. Put that right back in. We're going to do an oil change, obviously, once we uh, rebuild this thing. But yeah, it's not looking bad at all. I was expecting a chunk or two in there. We didn't have any chunks. That's a win. For me, <laughs> don't have to rebuild the bottom end. The rod bearing was fine, and the oil looks good, so all the bearings in there should be good still. All right, here's what that oil looks like. It was overfilled a little bit, but not too bad. It's really, really black. Definitely needing an oil change. No question about that. All right, so we completely disassembled this thing. It turns out that really, the only problem with the engine was the loose stud right here um, and the torquing of the head bolts weren't very tight. And I think that was leading to oil leaking. And a bunch of these holes are stripped out, preventing the valve cover from sealing. And then the holes right here are stripped out. So we're gonna have to tap those and get some new bolts for those. If I don't go with a new head, we will see. The head actually looks fine, the valves look fine, um, but we are going to replace the valve seals for sure. And we'll have to look at the valves and see if those are still usable. Otherwise, we're gonna order up some kibble white and some new valve seals and we'll be all good to go. Um, cam looks good, everything else looks good. Cylinder looks good. So we'll probably just hone that and uh, get a new piston or just new rings. The piston actually looks really good. No damage to the piston at all. But uh, this thing needs a lot more work than I anticipated. It also needs the swing arm bushings 
a new steering stem and a clamp for the pipe and then a bracket welded on for the engine so we can get that secure because look at I mean the engine's just really wobbly in there right now and it's not good to run it like that but yeah, other than that <laughs> I guess it wasn't too bad of a buy we're probably gonna end up sticking another 400 bucks into it so we'll probably have around 1900 into it so I mean obviously wasn't my best buy but I don't know I think it'll be nice once it's all done um, I looked up these shocks right here these Olins and these go for big money actually so those are nice shocks on there apparently <laughs> on eBay they sell for like 2000 a set so that's pretty crazy but yeah we'll get this thing rebuilt and uh, it'll be running great the plan for this what was to just do the couple fixes that the guy mentioned and then have a running quad, but I'm not gonna shortcut it and uh, bypass all those fixes that it needs. It needs a lot of work and a lot of attention before this thing is safe to ride. So I wanted to do it right, strip it down, replace everything that needs replacing, and uh, that way I don't have to worry about it. So next video we'll do that, and uh, this thing will be all good to go. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that continuously watches the videos and uh, supports the channel. It means a lot to me and we went through a lot of cool quads this year, a lot of cool projects and uh, it was awesome having you guys along for the ride. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, stay tuned for the next video. More to come on this thing and more projects for 2023. Stay tuned for the next video and until next time we are out. Mm -hmm.